you can preach and have a thousand sermons, mm-hmm. but if they don't have you, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. So if if what you're talking about isn't in you and in your heart and you're not living it, it's a yeah. problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rooted in Christ podcast. My name is Eric Stevens, and I'm the founder of Redwood Christian Ministries. I have a very special guest today, music director, soon-to-be Grammy Award-winning artist. Don't laugh. We're about to put that out there in the atmosphere right now. Oh, man. India, Elise, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for having me. Before we get started, I got a question because I'm I'm looking around right now. Oh, Lord. And this this setup is is nice. It is... (laughs) It's really nice up in here. Thank I'm just you. Wondering if y'all need an evangelist. <laughs> just wondering. Sure. Fivefold variety. I mean yeah. everything you have. Okay, I'm asking for a friend, not me. Oh, you know? oh, yeah. Everything that's it. they it have. Yeah, yeah. Everything they got. We need it. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let them know. Amen. That y'all have openings. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. The album is out. Yes, it is. How does it feel? Uh, still unreal. Okay. It's still very unreal, um, but exciting. There you go. Yeah, extremely exciting. I'm ready. I'm ready. I cannot wait to dive into that, discuss that whole process with mm-hmm. you. But before we do that, I just want to give people a chance to get to know the person behind the music, behind the Sir. songs, behind the person they see on stage. So mm-hmm. let's let's go ahead and just dive into it. Let's what, get into it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Talk yeah. to us. Let's start from the beginning. What was right. What was it like for you growing up? Where are you from? How did you get on this journey? Let us know. Man, um, growing up, I uh, grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I was supposed to be born in L.A., but okay. that didn't happen. West Coast. And I'm here on the East Coast. So, <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Cleveland. Um, where I grew up? I grew up mostly in Maple Heights, Ohio. Uh, it was pretty cool, you know, normal childhood, nothing crazy. Um, I did grow up Catholic, so it was very, you know, quiet and... That was kind of the church scene. Um, musically, it was extremely diverse. Mm. All kinds of different music. Um, my parents, they were in a band. They went to, they toured Europe and they were all over there. And, you know, so I grew up at kind of in a, a musical family. Okay. It, was, it was really crazy. But the up upcoming, bringing, what is it? What is it? Up, you could say upbringing, childhood, up, whatever. This is, your, child, this is your show. The you, childhood. <laughs> 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 the childhood was good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. There you go. So you grew up Catholic. Mm-hmm. What high school what school did you go to? I went to Maple Heights. Okay. Maple Heights High School. Um, when I was younger, I went to Garfield because we did go to Garfield. Um, and then we moved over to Maple. So I did middle school and high school. Um, I did a little bit of college and uh, did Tri-C. Okay. But I was so undecided about what I wanted to do that I took like the pre prerequisites. And then I was like, all right. So that was, that was pretty much it on school. So So you were always around the faith growing up. I was, I was, my dad was, um, always Catholic growing up. My mom wasn't really into church. And when I grew up, we were Catholic at first. It wasn't until I was about 16 or 17. We started going to this really large church and I didn't like it because I knew I was going to see all my friends and I was just like, let's just not do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And um, when we started going, they had a live band and from my upbringing, that's not what I was used to. Mm. So when I saw them have like a whole concert for worship, I was like, I'm going every <laughs> Sunday. That's so turn me out. And then I ended up getting saved when I was like 18. Okay. And so, that's when I first got saved and really started um, operating in the faith a lot more. I'm going to adjust this. Go ahead. Do what you're We're going to do. do that a few times in this session. So I can amen. see that happening. I amen. can see that. Amen. We might have to lock that in for you. Yeah, we might. You might have to lock <laughs> one more time, but that's all right. It's all good. We're going we're gonna to keep this real in here today. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you said L.A. You're supposed to be born in L.A. Yeah. But happened to be in Cleveland. Yeah. Okay. How did that was there how did that take place just parents well, moved my yeah my okay. parents were doing music out in LA at the time and my mom was pregnant with me and the living situation just wasn't ideal okay and it, none of their family was out there and th- see <laughs> I just keep on the Holy none Spirit of, we doing it right I know right <laughs> so uh, none, of, none of their family was out there and so they just decided Let, let's move back home so right. I think a few months before I was born they moved back and then we were back in Cleveland. Okay. Amen. Amen. 
<laughs> so you really started living it out when you were when you were 18. Yeah, when okay. I was 18. Um I had always been familiar with God. I knew I knew there was a God, mm -hmm. but I was like, you know, I don't really know him, you know, but I knew of him and I knew that he was, he knew, I knew that he was real. He existed. So like, even from a younger age, I would always pray and just kind of talk to him, but I didn't have that relationship because I didn't really know how to. Um, and when I got saved at 18, I was taught at my church how to really have a relationship with him and what his word said. And I was like, Oh, so it was like this big aha moment of, Oh, that's who he is. And that's why sometimes I feel this way or sometimes I, you know, have discernment. You know, it just made it just blew my mind. All the things that I used to know was just being confirmed mm. as I got to know him. Right. So I really started walking with him at 18 and I've been going ever since. So, yeah. And so did you have people around you at that point at age 18, like really teach like, OK, this is what this journey is going to be like. This is some of the things you might see or go through or face. Like, did you have that that support system at that point? Um, at that time, I would say. Um, so I got saved at 18. I did ministry. <clears throat> I did ministry for about a year or two. And then I was in the ministry at the church I was at. OK. And it was at that point that I was surrounded by. Um, other believers that were my age and I was also in the young adult ministry um, and they had really taught me a lot about okay this is how you live this out this is what it looks like and the pastors over the young adults they were in their 30s at the time I was 20 okay. and so they installed a lot of wisdom so yes the answer would be yes on that okay for anybody who doesn't know what what is a young adult ministry at that point like what what's the age group what were they doing um at that point I don't know if it's changed much now but at that point it was like maybe 18 to 30 30s pushing it but uh it was it was about in that age range and the pastors were usually 30 to 35 yeah. and um you know it was just we would do church we would do life groups we would do worship nights right. we weren't calling them worship nights then yeah. but that's what it was you know and just creating a community for our young adults so yeah I have aged out of the young adult group in my church <laughs> just a little bit. It's okay. I'm about to be out too. So. Yeah, I'm I'm kicking 40s door down, but that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. That's <laughs> all okay. Right. I want to take time out to thank Remedy Church for even allowing me to use yeah. this location today because you're the music director here, right? So yes. Talk to me a little bit about that. So you lead worship here on Sundays. What is that like? What does it mean to worship God? Like, what? How would you How would you explain that to someone who may not know? Um, which, which one are we going to tackle first? The, what does it look like on Sundays here or to worship God? Let's start with worshiping God and then we'll talk about how that leads into your, what you do on Sundays. Okay. Well, most of the time when people talk to like people in music or people in worship and they say, well, what does it mean in worship? There's usually a twofold thing. It's like the musical side and then the lifestyle side. So I'll tackle the lifestyle side because I feel like if you don't have the lifestyle side, then the music side is not going to be effective. That's good. So um, first off, what worship means to me is dedicating your life to God. Um, everything that you do, every decision that you make, you know, um, going outside, should I go left? Should I go right? Everything you do is dependent on, you know, okay, I want to give God glory and I want to give him praise and I want him to be proud of me. And in doing that, I believe that that's how we worship him. Mm -hmm. It's just living our lives as a thank you to him. You know, it's just being like, okay, guy, well, I have this big job opportunity. What do you feel about this? Because at the end of the day, our job is to reflect him in life. And so when people that don't know him see us, I, it's cliche, but we may be the only Bible that they ever read no, or see, real. you know, like, and so therefore we have to give glory and honor back to him with how we live and that's how we worship him, you know? So if we don't have a lifestyle of worship mm -hmm. off the stage, that's right. which is meeting with God, talking with God, knowing what his word is saying, you know, giving him reverence, you know, all these things off the stage, then when we get on the stage, it's, it's almost, it doesn't count. You know what I mean? So, um, I believe that lifestyle off the stage is definitely way more important <laughs> than, than on the stage. Cause on the stage is just the tip of the iceberg. Right. Like we see icebergs and they're like just the top. 
but there's this whole big piece at the bottom. And I, you know, I, I honestly feel like if that whole bottom piece isn't stable, then the top just falls apart, it's which real. is the stage. So um, that's the lifestyle piece. Musically, I feel like worshiping, <laughs> worshiping God. I tell my team this all the time. When we get up on that stage, what people are seeing is just our relationship with God through music. That's all it is. That's all it is. So when, when they're coming in, it's not really about performing. It's not about, you know, we got to sound great and all that, though you, you do have to have a skill set right. <laughs> when you do the music piece. <laughs> but um, I felt like you were talking directly to me when you were saying <laughs> like, Subtle warning. We know you can't I'm sing. I'm sorry. It's, okay? like you, it's okay. You do have to have a no, Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> I know. It's okay. I don't, I don't take it personally. No, it's all right. I'm crying um, inside. But, yeah, you do, you do have to have a skill set. But it's not all about the skill set. It's about the heart as well. And, um, you know, on stage, is, is, it should just be a reflection of our relationship through music. So that was a lot, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm not. So. This, don't, don't apologize, because this, this is going to go however long it goes. This is your... Okay. And I think it's important that people understand it. Like, a lot of times when we see people on mm -hmm. stage or we see people doing anything, mm -hmm. what they do behind closed doors, it matters. Yeah. As yeah. much as what they don't do behind closed doors. Totally agree. You know, if, yeah. if you're not invested as a worship leader, a, a preacher, mm -hmm. a teacher in the actual studying yeah. of the word and yes. living it out... You're now living for the performance. Yes. Which means you're yes. not living unto God. Yeah, that's good. Which that's means good. you are now, you've created an idol. Yes. And maybe that's the best case scenario. Yeah. Court, yeah, listen. You know, so yeah. it can go a lot worse than that. So, no, yeah. I appreciate everything you said. No, keep that coming. Keep that coming. Yeah, so, man. So, how long have you been leading worship here? Uh, here? Mm -hmm. I've been here two years. Okay. In December, it will be two years. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it's been fun. It's been a fun ride. I have learned so much because I've never, I've always kind of been a leader, but I've never had to lead at this capacity. And I tell you, I've learned so much and it's humbled me mm -hmm. so much. Just dealing with people, loving people the way Christ wants you to love on them. It's, it's hard in ministry, you know, and I've always been, you know, kind of over people, but this, this really stretched me and this right. really, you know, taught me so much about Christ's love and his grace and his mercy upon people that it's, I mean, it's done a number on my heart. I can tell you that. You <laughs> I've just been like, wow, <laughs> wow. So, yeah. I tell you what, if, if leadership is easy, you're doing something wrong. Exactly. You are exactly. definitely it doing is so something hard, wrong. Man. Like you are either not like challenging yourself. You might not be challenging the, you know, you might just, be living a standard like but leadership is not yeah it is not easy yeah leadership is yeah, it's everything but easy and it really pulls when you're doing it right it pulls it pulls all of you out right. because you ha you can't lead as yourself you right. have to lead with the heart of christ amen because he leads he leads the best and he knows he would do things that we wouldn't like in stressful situations like i would just be like all right i'm done right <laughs> Like, I don't have to do with this goodbye. But God is like, no, you have to stay. You have to love. You have to learn. You have to hear. You have to listen. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> okay, God. God yeah. checked me on that once. Yeah, man. I was in Chicago mm -hmm. in a hotel. I was exhausted. I was traveling mm -hmm. so much for work. God called me, and I'm like, I don't want to answer the phone. I really just didn't. Like, I didn't have it in me to pick yeah. up the phone. And I literally heard God tell me, who are you to deny one of my children? Ooh. I was like, oh. Uh, how do you repent before you pick up the phone? Right, right. right? <laughs> my bad guy. Hello. And, and then I, I pray that God gave me a word for that for that individual yeah, when we yeah. when we spoke. But you're right. Sometimes I mean at the end of ourselves, that's where God is, right? But yeah, you put yes, us there. Exactly. Leadership is always gonna gonna it's gonna stretch you. Yeah. It's gonna cost. Yeah. And you have to be able to pay and know that cost up front. So exactly. before you go lead 5, 10, 15, 20 people, right. you need to know, should I only be leading three? Is that my capacity? Exactly. Like, Exactly. Again, that's behind real. the season in the prayer closet, right? Yes, so. yes. It, it will take you right to the end of yourself, like you said. And so. you are ready to jump sometimes. Oh, <laughs> sometimes you do. And then guys like, guess who has a parachute on? Right, right. You. Or you land, yeah. Just walk back up there. You just land on a pillow and bounce right back up. <laughs> right, all right. Trampoline yeah. and you're back. I already yeah. know I'm an active fool for this whole episode. That's all right. I'm an active fool for all, all right. of this. So I asked everybody who comes on the show this question. So mm -hmm. why do you do what you do? Man, that's a loaded, that's a loaded question, man. Um, I've thought about this too. Um, sheesh. I have, 
I've been through so much in my life mm. and I've listened, like I'm a big music head yeah. and I, I love music. I love what it does. I love what it can do to an atmosphere. That's right. Um, it can shift an atmosphere, you know, like it's amazing what music can do. And I was given the gift to be able to create and to write. Um, but I've also been given the gift to teach and help others. And honestly, I think, you know, if I'm just speaking to music, I do what I do to help others um, connect with God through music. Um, I want them to feel his presence when they put my music on. I want them to have hope. I want them to know, okay, when they put my music on, one, they're not putting it on because of me or what I'm doing, but it's what he's doing through the music. So I do what I do to help others. Um, there was a testimony that came that just broke me, man. Um, it, was a, it was the song Ran Red. And the lady said she was struggling with cutting and she was going to commit suicide. But, you know, one of her friends, I think, sent her the song. Or I, I don't know, like, the details, but um, she heard it and she she said it pretty much directed her back. You know, and I said, that's it. That's why I do what I do, to direct people up to him. It's, right. it's nothing about me. It's it's all about him. So it's, it's really just to be a, a great reflection of him, of Christ. So. It's crazy how your yes mm. can lead to breakthrough for somebody else. Mm. Yes. And you don't even yeah. know it sometimes when you yeah. just say yes to God out of nothing more than obedience. Yes, yes. Whether you feel like doing it or not, I'm just going to do this out yes. of obedience. Yes. And then it sets somebody else free. Yeah. And it makes God real to them. It makes Jesus Listen, real to them. Like, it's crazy. It's, it's beyond crazy because you can never see it. Right. You, you never know. You would never know. Like, we'll get to that when we get to that. But just <laughs> in short, my yes to the album was years ago and it was just an EP. It was just a few songs. And he was like, yeah, but I got right. this whole thing for you and you going to do all of this and help all these people. I just need you to say yes. Right. You know, no money, no job, no this, no, just your yes. Just give me your yes. And I was like, <sighs> and it was scary <laughs> and I wanted to jump like right. we talked about, but I, I jumped and he had a trampoline ready and yeah. said, Hey man, we back. <laughs> so are you ready? And I said, yes. yes. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that is so true, man. The yes will do it every time. I'm jumping out of my skin when I talk about this album, but Ran Red is my favorite song. Ah, this ah, hands down my God, favorite man. song. It's hands down my favorite song. Ah. You kind of answered this, but I'm going to ask anyways. Like I said, these okay. two questions I ask every guest. What motivates you to do what you do? What motivates me to do what I do? Um, hmm. Let me see. What motivates me? A lot, a lot motivates me. Um, testimonies mm. motivate me to do what I do, my own personal testimony, um, what I've came out of, um, you know, life in general, us as people, other people, when they tell me their testimonies, it motivates me to write. It motivates me to get in my studio and be like, okay, Lord, that really, that really got me going. Right. The word motivates me. Sometimes I read a scripture and I'm like, that's a whole song right, right. there, God. Or I'm just going through a season and I read a scripture that literally saves me in that season. And I'm like, you know what? I'm writing about this. You know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, that that's what really motivates me. There so, yeah. So I don't have a musical bone in my body. Okay. Like, <laughs> At all. Okay. Okay. I sing great in the shower until the water turns off. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah, right. I'm that I'm that artist. Nice. But, so like who inspires you to to make music? Like what do you, are there artists that you listen to? Or are there people like or is like, no, I don't really listen to that because I don't want to be influenced by it. Like how right. I have heard it on both sides. So I'm just curious what Yeah. What you. Um I listen to a lot of different <clears throat> a lot of different music. Um, but may, when it comes to worship, I really, I honestly really like, I think it's Paul and Hannah McClure. Okay. I love their writing style and I also love what they think of melodically. Um, and it, that really inspires me. I also like Stephanie Frizzle. She does a lot of things lyrically and musically that I'm just like, yes. And, uh, the, the overall sound of like, um, kind of. Bethel and Hill song, just okay. the way that they create on the spot and stuff like that. That's that has inspired me, I think, for the past like six years, honestly. That really I can put it on and be like, Oh my God, I can hear that. And I can hear this. And I so I, I would say I would say them right now. All right. So you were in a car with your friends. 
Okay. Y'all going wherever you going. Okay. What are you listening to? Um, if it, it depends on the day, it depends on what, what the day is like. Is it raining? Is it sunny? You know what I mean? Is it, is it nighttime? Is it daytime? That's, that's the kind of music yeah. listener I am though. Okay. So I'm totally like a moodist. That's not a word. I created it. That's so okay. All I'm, words are made up. Yes. Yes. I'm a moodist. So <laughs> it's just kind of like, if it's like a sunset and it's nice outside, I might put on John Mayer. I love okay. I love me some John Mayer when the sun is setting. So, um, or maybe I, I don't know, like in the mornings I really love William Augusto. Okay. He's um he's just he does instrumentals and I love driving to work or driving to where I'm going in the morning, listening to him. It just clears me out. So that's that's some of the were you looking for more? No, you yeah. named it. Was my next question would be who are your favorite artists, but you you hit it already. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Anybody else you want to mention? Favorite artists? No, I don't have too many favorite artists at the moment. Okay. Um, so they, you know, they come and go like seasons. Right. Like I really used to like, but now I don't so much. So right now, I don't have too many. Do you feel like listening to a lot of music out this out now like affects your creativity in a negative way, positive? Like what what do you say the impact is? Like um, the impact. It, well, how I listen to music is I create playlists. And so it's kind of filtered to what I like and what I want to listen to. Rarely do I ever create radio stations because then a radio station is going to put on something that's going to mess with me. And I'm like, okay, I don't like this. So let's get out of this radio station. So a lot of times, even if I'm like an H&M or something and I'll hear like a fun, fun song, I'm like, oh, I like this song. You know, know, Siri, what song is this? You know, and I'll find it. I'll put it on my playlist and then I like it and it lifts me up, you know. So I have playlists that kind of dictate how I'm going so that nothing really does infiltrate me that's like, well, I didn't like that, you know, so. I'm real cautious what I have planned and what I'm listening to in general, Mm -hmm. but especially before I go teach or preach. Oh, for sure. Because I don't want to be influenced Mm-hmm. by anything else i even usually get off social media because i don't want to see yeah a status an update and oh, the next yeah. thing you know now i'm writing about it yeah and it's like yeah. you know what i mean and it's a, whether conscious or mm-hmm. subconscious like i'm yeah. usually pretty cautious what i'm ingesting yeah at that point so no that makes sense I, I totally agree i'm the same way um now i i listen to different kind of music but it's not like oversaturated is right. i mean most of my stuff i listen to a ton of worship stuff um and whenever i have to go Honestly, whenever I have to minister or teach or whatever, I, I honestly put on William Augusto mm-hmm. because there are no words and it's just him playing. Right. And for me, that's that clears me out because I am a singer. Sometimes if I put on worship that has singing, I'm listening to the singing, you right. know, or I'm listening or I'm attaching myself to how they sound or I'm being overly critical for no reason. And yeah. I'm just like, I don't need to be like that. You know, I, so putting William Augusto on just clears me out. It empties me out. So then when I go and worship, I'm clean, you right. know, well, I, you know, I, best you. I can be. So I listen to John Maxwell a lot. Cause mm-hmm. I end up talking a lot about leadership. Yeah. So it does that for me because it keeps me yes. from, okay, this pastor said this, I don't agree with that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right, and, right, and it right. It may not even be necessarily something that they said that's incorrect. It's just yeah. not a philosophy that I'm going to apply or it doesn't fit the people right. I'm pouring into. Right. He forces me to look at myself and mm-hmm. look in the mirror yes. and just be like, okay, go back to the actual mirror. Go back to the Bible right, okay, right. and weigh this out here. Yeah. Weigh what you're looking at here. Yeah. So I, I hear you on that. Yeah, totally agree. All right, I'm jumping into this because I can't wait anymore. Okay, so all right. The day the album drops, right? Yes. How did you feel? I don't know. I think I slept. <laughs> I were you asleep at the release party? Like, I, like, <laughs> I, I was trying to be, Got you it. know, Got um, <laughs> the release party was great. Um, yeah, the release party was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. Everybody who I loved came. And um, when the album actually dropped, it was like um, having a child because, you know, I had labored for three years wow. trying to get this album out. And it finally came out. And it was just like a ton of emotions. Mm-hmm. It was, a, and, and that's why I went to sleep <laughs> because I was happy. I was stressed. I was sad. I was excited. I was scared. You know, there are so many emotions that were going on. So I think overall, I was just very calm and I just sat on the couch all day. <laughs> so, yeah. 
just sitting there just waiting for the feedback to come in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's like you don't know. I mean, I have a few singles out, mm-hmm. but an album is different than a few singles. You know, you don't know if people are going to like your body of artwork. You know, that's that's a lot to put out. It's, it's vulnerable. You're, right. you're putting yourself out there and you just pray, you know, that at the end of the day they see God, but I'm still human, so I'm still nervous. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you right. know, so. But it was surreal. It was amazing. It, it it ended up being awesome. So um, it was a high that I never had, you know. You so it was, it was really good. Where can we listen to it? You can listen to it on any, any musical platform. So Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. What is it? Amazon. What are the other ones? Uh, Tidal. I think Google has something. Google. Too. Everybody. <laughs> everybody everywhere. It was like Overcast or something like that. There's a ton of them. Everybody. All of them. All of them. Every last one of them. It don't matter yes. what the name is. It's yes. Out. It's you out. can listen to it on all of those platforms. So it's out everywhere. It's called See You Move. It's called See You Move, um, Indie Elise. And it is an abstract painting. So it has a lot of colors on it. That's how you know you found it. Yeah. Is there, any, is there a story behind the name of the album and then behind the Oh, my art? God. There's... A huge story. Oh, good. There's, I'm going to just sit back. Ah, uh, yikes. Great. This is great. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me adjust. I ain't, I ain't got adjust nothing my but time. Mind. Okay. And I got plenty of batteries, so we can All right. Going. Great. Great. Um, so, yes. Yeah, see you move. Oh, Lord. Okay. So, in the beginning. <laughs> wow. So, okay. uh, uh, yeah. Three years ago. <laughs> yeah. So, three years ago, I was um, job hunting because God told me. A year before then, you know, quit your job. I have something for you. And I was like, oh, Lord. And at the time, I had a really good job. And it just it wasn't making sense. And then he was like, do you trust me? And I was like, mm, yes. And he said, good, quit. And I said, <laughs> mm, <laughs> amen. <laughs> so I did. I quit. So I found myself trying to find jobs all the time because – um, my flesh was just like, no, like, um, I am a very hard worker, so it wasn't in me to just sit and wait, but God was like, you know, you need to sit and wait on me and understand that I am your provider. Mm. And I was like, man, I just, I'm just not getting it. You know, like I understand you are, but I want to provide for myself. So I went to this job. I literally worked the job for four hours. I went on break and I never came back. <laughs> Because in the middle of the break, God was like, girl, what are you doing? I was like, you're right. This was stupid. Why did I come? So I'm literally sitting in the car sobbing. Like, Lord, you just said that you had something. Just mad at the Lord. Mad. Ooh, I was so mad at him. He know I was mad. Um, And I was like, Lord, I don't understand. What do you want me to do? And he was like, use the gift that I gave you. Put out the music that I give you. I uh, had no resources. Um... I just didn't have anything. I, I didn't even know guys that did mixing and mastering and all that stuff. I, I knew that that had to happen. And I was like, I'm just a songwriter. I don't know how to do any of that. And God was like, that's cool. But I said what I said. And I was like, dang. Hmm. <laughs> OK. So from that point on, um, you know, I told him I told him yes. And I was like, well, all right. So the next thing that happened, this was really wild. So I got my people together. I got some of my friends that I know sing and some musicians that I knew from around town. I was like, guys, can you help me out? I want to do a live recording, blah, 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 blah. They're like, cool. So I'm running over the dates with God. And I'm like, okay, Lord. So I was thinking about doing March 2020. And immediately he said no. And I said, okay, well. It's July 2019. We need time to make sure these four songs, because we only have four. Mm. We only have four. To make sure these four songs are going to be done right in excellence. And he said, no. And I said, okay. This year? He said, yes. I said, hmm. Okay, Lord, but why? Nothing. I said, okay, well, he's not telling me why, so it's got to be November. So I said, okay. I told everybody November. They were like, why so soon? I was like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. So we did it. November comes around, and we did it the first time. It was amazing, amazing, but we had some technical difficulties, so we had to do it again. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, Lord. Okay, so now <laughs> can we do it in March? He said, no. I said, Lord. He said, January. 
I said, January? Lord, this doesn't make any sense. And he's like, I said what I said. So I'm like, all right. So mind you, before each <laughs> before each uh, uh, recording, I made everybody fast for a week. <laughs> so the first fast, everybody was like barely hanging on because we really, <laughs> we really went for it, but we really wanted God to move. So that's where it kind of formed. It started forming the name of See You Move. There we you also go. had a, a song called See You Move. So it was like, all right. So we finally get to the second one and it's done and, it, and it's good. Everything works out. March comes around and everything shut down because of COVID. Because of COVID. And God was like, and I was like, oh, you are God. <laughs> <laughs> you do know. So, so that was kind of like that front. The actual See You Move name came from, I was at a church at the time and, uh, you know, their congregation was so like, thirsty Mm -hmm. like they inspired me to to just write something that talked about seeing God move because every Sunday they were just like we just want to see him move you know and at the time I was um I was writing a lot of other songs and I was like you know I'm gonna write a song just for you know in my life because I needed to see him move because I was really struggling at the time with just being in the pocket of where he wanted me and being at that church and I was like you know I'm gonna really write I wanted to write a song and I wrote the the first, the whole first half of it in like a half hour. Oh, wow. And I was just like, yes, because it just poured out. It really inspired me. But the bridge, I couldn't, I couldn't hear it. I was like, Lord, I really want this bridge to be something. I really want it to move me as the writer. And I just couldn't hear anything. I got frustrated, left the whole song alone for the day. Came back the next day and I sat down and said, Lord, you write the bridge. You write it because I can't hear it. And he said, well, what is in your heart? And I said, well, my heart is open. Lord, I, you know, I'm ready. I want to see you move from you. So just invade where I am. I just want to see you move. And he said, then that's it. And I said, okay, all right. And then he said, play, just play. I said, okay. So I just started playing. And it just came out. Uh, oh, I was sitting there bawling, <laughs> bawling myself to see a move. So it reached me, you know, and I always feel like, you know, as a creator, if the song reaches me, I have more like confidence that it'll reach others because it, it broke me down. That's real. So from that moment on, I was like, well, we'll call the EP See You Move. Now, obviously, from the two times that it happened, we had about five songs that were mm-hmm. created on the spot and then that with the four songs that we already had created the album so then it was like oh we got a whole album on our hands and then you know the pandemic did hit so it took us that those extra two years to try to get everybody together we had different guitarists we had all kinds of people join in and help out on some of the overdubs and stuff so it it is amazing and I am so amazed at what God did on that album, man. So that's the long extended story behind See You Move. Keep going. <laughs> like, I might move in this space. Like, this is not, I ain't got nowhere to be. Oh, Keep going. nice. Keep Come on going. in. Come I'm, on in. They're going to have to kick me out. All right. So is, is there anything else you would say that went into the creative process of this? Or is that like how the whole, like, was there anything else that was just like, okay, I don't know, you know more about that than, than I do. Like, what, yeah. uh, what was the rest of it? Because you said you, I mean, it's crazy to me you didn't know you had the, the album. Like, that's crazy how God just like, Yeah, he, he just literally blew it together. And I said, oh, wow. Yeah, there is a huge creative process. Okay. Um, so there was the first layer of me just being the writer mm-hmm. and having the visual and kind of like the idea of the songs. Woo. But then there is this other layer called Elix. And he is, he was my MD. He's my producer. He is my brother. If you watch him, bro, you know I love you. But he came on and he literally boosted the vision, the visual and what you hear on the album to what it is now. So his production behind the album, I mean, the songs are what I wrote, but it's his production to that I mean it was both of us together that created that amazing sound that you hear especially in the first song called Approaching Heaven um the second night of See You Move he just sat down and he just started playing 
And that's what came out. And he, he was telling the guys where to go. So that was his creative mind in that first song. So there is that. We had guys from um, Chicago helping us out on electric guitar. And then we got a guy from, I think, Singapore okay. who helped mix it. And um, another guy that mastered. So there were a lot of hands on the pot in the pot as far as, like, creatives and and what what the sound actually was um and i'm just so blessed i thank all of you guys you know you know who you are you are incredible incredible guys so yeah it was not just me i tell people all the time it took a village to yeah. hear that sound it's not it's not mine like it's literally the city of cleveland and beyond mm -hmm. that that you're actually hearing when you hear the album so yeah i said this in one of my sermons recently mm -hmm. that you can preach and have a thousand sermons, mm -hmm. but if they don't have you, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So if if what you're talking about isn't in you and in your heart and you're not living it, it's a yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. And you nailed it when you said it moved you. Yes, it yes. It was already moving you to tears, so mm -hmm. you knew the spirit was in it before yeah. you even before you even knew you yeah. had a full album. So that is so good. That yeah. is amazing. That is amazing. How important is it to have the right people around you on a process oh, like this? Man, like you got an idea, you got a word from God, and you all and you got to obviously be careful. Like sometimes when you get a word from God, who you share these things with. Yes. Cause you yes. have to nurse, like you said, you, you felt like you were in labor, you know what right. I mean? Like, so this is your child. Right. right. And you're not going to just leave anybody with your child. Yes. Or expose anyone to your child. So mm -hmm. how important was it to have the right people around you during this process? Um, I would say that it is top priority when you're going into something like this, because one, like you said, who are you sharing your vision with? Because not everyone around you has good motives for you. That's real. And the reality is as people, if people catch on to a good idea or a good song, they'll steal it. You know, that's why you have to get the stuff copywritten. And it could be very dangerous sharing the child that God has given you. Right. Um, so I would say it's very 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 important that you are careful and that all, to the point you should you need to pray um and see who god wants you to share that that's vision real. with um that's on like just the the spiritual aspect um on the actual you know music side and technicality um i would say it's just as important because you can have a great song but if you get with someone who doesn't know how to mix mm -hmm. or doesn't know how to um, represent your sound the way that you want, they can destroy that, you know? Um, so it's, it's important on all fronts, mm -hmm. but it's, it's best to really, I would honestly just encourage you to pray That's real. and ask God who should be a part of whatever you're doing. And I guarantee you that he will surround you with the right people, even if you wouldn't have picked them. Because a lot of times, well, I know for my project, there's some, there's some I was like, I, I didn't even know them to mm -hmm. pick them. And God was like, that's cool. I'll send such and such that knows such and such, and he'll pick them for you. And I was like, dang, I never would have done that. And he's like, right, I know. So I, I just really encourage anybody who's going to do a project like this, see who God has for you. Don't, don't, don't do it yourself because you'll end up messing the project up because right. of who you pick. So, yeah. When I started Redwood, mm -hmm. I was, God gave me the vision, mm -hmm. right? And it was because of a story that somebody else had told me. It was literally the Holy Spirit in them mm -hmm. speaking the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah. And I sat on it for a full year mm -hmm. and then God brought it out in 2020. Woo, he said, yeah. go back to this now because I never shook the thought. Yeah. Because Stay anybody who you. knows me, like I'm not looking to be busy. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right, right. I'm not looking for something else to do. God was like, I need you to go back to this. Yeah. And he told me the two people to involve in the startup of this. Yes, and yes. And it was crazy because then he told me, and you were one of these people, mm. the first people to reach out to to be guests on this on this podcast. Wow, Because none wow. of this was, I didn't ask for this. I literally did yeah. not. And I, I think that a lot of times that people look and they see people on stage or they see mm -hmm. them on the camera, and they don't realize that a lot of times those people didn't ask for that platform. Right. It's the calling that God has Listen. On them. I Listen. am so uncomfortable even right now <laughs> sitting here talking to you. Like, it's just crazy. Oh, no. Like, it's just crazy how God... Yeah. He's just like, I need you to do this. I just need your yes. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to make it. I'm going to make it happen. And yeah. And God's spider web of, I'm going to bring you this and bring you this. Yes. And bring that yes. person. And yes. it just comes together. It's crazy. Right. Right. And he, I, I feel like he always does the absolute most when we're uncomfortable. Because I feel like we're vulnerable in that state. That's and real. he's like, 
this is great. Now you're not going to move or operate in the way that you would if you were comfortable. And I feel like he's done that so much with me. Right. The minute I say yes, then he pulls me out into the water and then I'm just, and he's like, great, <laughs> now we're going to. And I'm like, Lord, but wait. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. You start to really see who you are when the pressure's on and when you you're do. uncomfortable. You do. You really do. I never would have done this. <laughs> this was not my idea. You're so good at it, though. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. I really do. Somebody write that down if y'all watch. Yeah. I need that. I'm, it's your guy right here. You can come back. We, I'm going to need you to okay. come back and do this I got you. Again. And if you I can just you. put that part on repeat, that'd be great. I will. <laughs> so, I will. I got you. I got a random question for you. This is for my own knowledge. This is for my own personal uh, joy here. We are scared. You should be. Okay. What artist would you like to most collaborate with right now? Anybody? Oh, right now. I would probably go back to uh, Paul McClure. Okay. I, I just, I, I love their, I love everything about him and, um, is it Hannah? I think it's Hannah McClure. Um, I love everything about their writing style, everything about their hearts for worship. Mm -hmm. And I would love to just kind of sit with them and see their process because, I feel like I could just learn so mm. much. I feel like they have, I feel like I can feel their wisdom even in their music. That's good. And that inspires me. So I would say them. And if you could open for any artist, would it be them It would too? be them. It would be them. It would be them. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I have a surprise for you right now. I'm scared. Yet again. Yeah. You know, we, you, sh you know what? I, I'm going to pray. I, for some reason, I startle people. It must be me. I think Amen. it's me. Amen. <laughs> I'm starting a new segment. Okay. With you. You oh. are the first person to ever Woo. be a part of this segment. Shoot. It is called Behind the Curtain. All right. Because you are doing something that I'm never going to be able to do because this is okay. not my gifting. Okay. okay. This is not my gift. Because if I start singing, everybody in this building I is think, leaving. I think you should give them a sample. No, I can't because no? I don't want to hurt my the followers that I have right now. Oh, okay. And, and All right. anybody new, okay. they're leaving. They we could be on there. Church Laugh, though. How about... I can hum. You start singing, and I'll just I'll prove that I'm like one of the best hummers you ever okay, seen. Okay, I got you. But we ain't gonna do that right now. All right, I got you. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna hear stray cats outside, like mm. crying if I start mm. singing. It's gonna be real bad. The Holy Spirit might leave too. It's a problem. Oh, so. it's not going. It's not. It's not good. It's not. The Holy good. Spirit loves you. They do. Loves me enough to tell me this is not your gift. Okay, yeah. that's real. <laughs> so, that's you know, real. That's make real. Make me aware of what I'm not. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> So you, you get to do something no one else, a lot of people aren't going to be able to do. So for the sake of the audience, like what I would, we're going to take them behind the curtain just okay. to tell them a little bit more about the creative process, about the music. So okay. what is your favorite song on the album? And then walk me through what the process was like creating that song. Man. Hmm. I would say, I, I would say it would be See You Move. But my biggest testimony was attached to Reach For You. Mm. So I'm going to say Reach For You. Um, that would be my favorite on the album. I forgot what else you asked me. So why would that be your favorite? Ah, okay. Um, I'm here that, to help. <laughs> I'm here thank to help. you. Thank you. Uh, I think that would be my favorite because of what I was going through when I wrote it. So um, the beginning is... <clears throat> um, the story of the lady with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. And then the second was, um, it was Peter off the boat. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, when Jesus called him mm -hmm. and he jumped off that boat and it was crazy. And it was like, what you doing, bro? And he was like, I got this. And then he saw Jesus and he was like, I'm falling. <laughs> so, so yeah. Sounds and, like Peter. Right. Right. And then, um, the end w was just talking about how, as you pulled me into you, no strings attached, you just want me. So at that time, what I was going through was, uh, it felt like every part of my life, I was getting pulled and tugged because of what people could get from me. And I was just at the end of myself. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, I felt used. I felt like people were using me and I just was like, okay, what what is this issue like? I was getting frustrated and all this other, all this other stuff. And I, w I kept talking to God about it and, Every time I would seem to talk uh, to God about it, it would just it would just lift off me. Mm. And I was like, you know, every time, Lord, I seem to reach, you know, for my Bible or for your word or for your presence. You just you pull me up, you know, like. And so I was literally in the shower because, you know, that's, that's where you sing. That's, that's too. What I, was, yeah. I was in the shower and a melody came to me and it was just 
And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I got out the shower and I was inspired to use the lady um, with the issue of blood because she was just going through mm -hmm. for so many years. Right. And then it was just like she finally just reached for him and it was handled. It was taken care of. She didn't have to worry, you know. And so I was like, yeah. I, I could relate with that at the moment because I just felt like I was getting used over and over and over again. And I was like, yeah, but every time I reach, I feel better. And then I used the second verse because I felt like, you know, the ways of life crash on us very often. And but we see Jesus and we don't sink, you know. Um, and even at the end, when the waves were like taking him over, he reached and then. He pulled him up. So I was like, yeah, let's do that for a second verse. That's good. Um, but the the bridge is what really got me. Um, I was praying to God, and he, I was literally just talking because that's how me and God do. I just be talking to him. Like, in prayers, they always personal because I'm always talking to him. Right. So it's just like, ah. But um, one time I was just talking to God, and I was just like, Lord, I just feel like they only want to, you know, give me the raise because they're going to use me here. And I was um, with my boyfriend at the time And I felt like Well he's only with me Because right. You know My family was only You know So I just felt a way About all these different Sections in my life And God told me He was like Well I, I just want you for you You don't have to bring Anything to the table You don't have to Haul anything over right. You don't have to do Anything crazy To come Into my presence I just want you And so the middle part was just talking about as you pull me into you, as you pull me into you, there's no strings attached. God just wants who we are. He, he doesn't want all those other things. And for me, I needed to hear that from God because I felt so used and abused. And he was like, baby, I just want you. Just come here. There's no strings attached with me. Just, just come here and let me love on you. Let me surround you, you know. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's the bridge. So um, that song is very, very dear to my heart. So I would definitely say reach for you. You just set the bar ridiculously high for behind the curtain. If that's <laughs> not behind the curtain, I don't know what is. That's real. I'm sorry. No, don't, don't apologize, please. Okay. Please, please. Okay. It is important to have, I mean, you, you talked about God in that, mm -hmm. that piece. It is important to have people around you mm -hmm. who accept you for you. Yeah. And yeah. not excusing your sin. We ain't saying. Mm, right, 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 you know right, I mean? right. But it's just like, you're good, you're bad, you're ugly, who you yeah. are, where you are. I love you for you because that's yeah. the way Jesus will love you. It's yeah. important to have that. So Yeah, it is. I, I, I just feel like, you know, I mean, obviously, we don't excuse sin and all right. that stuff. But, I mean, in a sense that, like at my job, they wanted me to be elevated, but I had to give. A lot more and it was just unnecessary and I was being done wrong I felt like the relationship I was in at the time it was only because of who I was right I heard and you. not because of me you know um mm -hmm. in some of the family situations I had they were attaching themselves because again of who what they could get from me right you know and so that just I just felt like you know your support system is kind of like you know your whole world kind of just falls apart and I was just like I I don't know, Lord. And every time I would come to God, he would just be like, but it's okay. And I was like, it is. <laughs> you know, he just melt in his presence. <laughs> you right, Lord. You do just want me. That's crazy. So, yeah. It's okay to cry in the presence of God. It's okay. Listen, it's okay. I am a just, I cry all the time. It's just painful. Like, we just had a recording yesterday, and I was just trying to pray a sin, and I was like, Lord, we just think for your presence because <laughs> you know you sound like a seal and then it's like <laughs> it's, it's all bad it's bad i ugly cry oh because i don't because i don't cry very often so when i do <sighs> it's like the worst mm. like i look like a completely different person yeah yeah I'm try not to cry on this on this podcast right yeah now. we don't we I don't want to break the camera you know it's if we both do it then we just can't yeah. air the Right. Can't air it. Well, I'll so. just start facing that way. <laughs> I'll just go down. There you go. Because <laughs> I ugly cry too. So, yeah. For me personally, this is the first album I've listened to mm. from start to finish in years. Mm. I'm talking like since Tupac, All Eyes on Me. <laughs> years. I'm talking before oh, I got man. saved. Years. Oh, uh, sheesh. The rappers have been mentioned on this podcast are getting ridiculous. But I'm just giving <laughs> I'm just That's using right. it as as a, a, a landmark. Uh, we appreciate you. <laughs> a timestamp. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to give people how real this is. Like this, yeah. I love listening to music mm. when, they're, when they're saying something. Yeah. And when I can feel it inside. Like when it's hitting me in the spirit. And it's like I put this on mm -hmm. 
and I was able to listen to it from beginning to end. This is a complete body of work. So yeah. I want to encourage anybody Amen. who is watching this podcast, listening to this, you need to go listen to this mm -hmm. album and Amen. just get in the presence of God and just let God, whatever he has for you, just have it in that moment. Amen. Just have that moment with Amen. him. So do you do you perform your album anywhere? Like are you like Um, no, we okay. haven't we haven't started yet. Okay. Um, but we're looking to do it maybe more so in the fall, but we don't have any like dates or any solid this is what we're gonna do. Okay. We don't have anything just yet. So. Give a venue you like to perform in. No. Say, okay. I actually don't. I actually I I don't I don't go out often. I'm I'm tucked under the rock. <laughs> <laughs> The cornerstone. The cor you, yeah, got it. <laughs> got it. Okay. I, I knew what you meant. under the cornerstone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Yeah. I so read the yeah. Bible today. We're good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah. Yeah. So, how did you end up promoting the album? How, do, how What was that like? Man. Life. Um, promotion for the album. I did a lot of the promotion myself. Um, I do love to create. I love creating creating videos and um i am a photographer as well so a lot of the um the work i created myself um but i do have a wild story about the album art hmm. um very early on i knew okay once i knew it was going to be an album i was like all right i wanted it to be abstract hmm. um because i feel like abstract is a wonderful representation of what god looks like because Though we can't pinpoint what it is, it's still an image. You know That's what I mean? Cool. So um, I love the way all the different colors, all the colors always represent the different sides of God for me. Yeah. And I was like, I just, I just want it to be all the different colors, like almost like this crazy rainbow, but it, it, it looks like it has fire, but it also has like, you know, I don't know, water and all the elements of the earth, but it's still holy and it's still majestic. So um, I went online. And I was like, I'm going to find it. <laughs> so I found this beautiful piece of artwork, but the artist is from Europe. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if he'll let me have this. Yeah. Because it's on Google. So, you know, it's very rare. I, I was like, we're probably not going to get it. So I did some deep research. And anybody knows me, I'm not that much of a researcher. So I went deep. <laughs> And I found him and I emailed him and I said, hello. I don't remember his name because it was in Europe. And I was like, I'm not about to jack this name up. Hello. Blah, 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 blah. And I was I told him about the album. I told him I wanted to use it and because their time is different. He hit me back about a day and a half later and he said, sure, you oh, can wow. have it. It's yours. And sent me the original file. And I was like. This you, Lord. This you. Look this is God. this is Look so. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, oh my goodness. So he sent it to me, and that's when I knew. I was like, this is this is the album artwork. So um, after that, I just did a little bit of design work on it to create like the three bars, and then I put my name in the name of the album. But that was him uh, who actually. Um, I forgot what kind of painting that is, but um, that's that's that. Other than that, I had like promos and stuff that I put together, and. Uh, I just prayed to God that people would like it. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. They love it. I promise. I promise. Oh, well, praise God. <laughs> praise God, man. How do you feel like the internet has impacted your music in general, mm -hmm. but then the way you go about promoting and sharing your yeah. information? Um, for music in general, I feel like it has done the music industry a great service and a great disservice at the same time. Um, you know, back in the day, you had to get signed and you had to do all these different things in order to even be on the radio because that was all we had. Uh, radio and then TV started playing stuff, right. you know. Um, and even then, they kind of limited who you listened to. Mm -hmm. um, but there was still hundreds of artists and creators out there you just never knew about because the radio was controlling it. Now, with the internet... You can hear all of them, but it's slightly an overload, and you, you you'll miss you'll miss some of them. Um, but I love the fact that you can find um, artists that may not have a record deal, or may not be signed, or may not be linked with one of these huge artists. And there's so many good artists. Right. There's so many good artists out now that you're able to have access to. Um, so I do love I love that aspect of it. Um, 
I've never put out any music until now. Mm -hmm. So I only know now. Um, so I would say that I love it and I hate it. I love it because I can get it out right now. You know, if I had a single out tomorrow, I can put it out tomorrow and it can be out in the world can hear it, right. you know. But I kind of hate it because though it's out there, you you can only really get back what people are saying. You know, like you can't really touch them. You don't really know the testimonies. You don't, you're not, you know, I'm right now I'm not ministering it out anywhere. So I don't really get a chance to talk to the people. So I feel like sometimes the internet can kind of be like this great overload of amazing views and likes, but there's, there's not too much that's tangible right. anymore. So I hope that answered the question. No, it does. It does. Okay. How hard is it to put yourself out there publicly like that? Oh my God. For my personality type, it is, terribly hard <laughs> it is terribly hard because i'm not the type of person that's gonna push 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 see me see me see me see me yeah. look 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 i'm just like all right it's out y'all go, go go find it you know it's buried under the rock you know under the cornerstone <laughs> so um it was really hard for me because i'm not a pusher i'm not a pusher but i have learned that i have to be comfortable with sharing what god has given me right. because at the end of the day He's the one that got me to, we need to get this going. And I can't be shy on God because right. that's that's my whole entire life. So I've had to pretty much die to myself and be like, all right, Lord, y'all go listen to the album. Y'all go listen yeah. to the album. Y'all go listen to the album. So it's been hard. That's been the most uncomfortable piece of this for me. I, I Man. Is like Verve Studios, shout out to them, does yeah. all of my stuff. And oh. they're like, Joey's just like, you need to go live more. Yeah. We need to make more reels. Like, you ah, can't just post these good pictures. Good job, Joey. Good job. And I'm like, but I don't really want to do this. No, he's, he's right. He's <laughs> right. You like, should. It's, it's, it, that is the most uncomfortable yeah. piece of it for me because you're putting it out there for anybody on the internet to say yeah, whatever yeah. That they want and to comment whatever that they yeah. want. And it's uncomfortable sharing podcast links and asking it people is. to like and follow and share. But if you it listen is. to this, please like, follow, and share. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, throw it out there real Plug. quick. Plug. Yeah cheap one <laughs> we already here so it's just that is that is the hardest part is letting yeah. people i mean into your life yeah but then you have to remember like you know what god gave god gave me this platform yes sir because yeah. i like we said this earlier i wouldn't be standing here mm -hmm. if it wasn't for him doing that yeah. this was not my choice so it's yeah. like i need to take my instagram page and making it unprivate took weeks oh i did it like three o'clock in the morning when no one was awake i'm like let me just go ahead and hit this on private button right now <laughs> everybody in la was like oh there it is yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> went public made it business i was like oh okay let's right. hope nobody notices and no they notice sees me oh uh, yeah yeah but if you have a music a, a business yeah. whatever out there like they need to be able to see the person behind it like yeah i was like this looks sketchy that my, i'm private so i look like spam before right that, you know right I mean? so, right it's real that's real it's real so. yeah yeah, I get that. It's it's just uncomfortable out here. It's so uncomfortable just sharing and letting people in. Yeah. You know, like, because it's easy. You know, it's easy when you can just, like, post a picture. Right. You know, like, but that's not letting them in. You know, letting them into your music and who you are and what you've been through. You know, there's always a chance. Somebody's not going to like it. Somebody's going to disagree. And that's right. just real. And you got to be all right with that. Right. So I get it. I get it. We posted one of our YouTube shorts, and mm. I saw somebody put a thumbs down in there. I was like, that is so mean. Why would you do that? I'm talking about that, Jesus. Why are you going to put a thumbs down? Real. That like, means you're real. That means you're real now. you going to give me a thumbs down? <laughs> I was trying to encourage you. Yeah, they're, they're like that out I went there. to the bathroom and cried at the gym and then went back to the weight oh. room. I got over it. I got over it. I didn't really cry. Okay. I kind of right. laughed. Okay. I was like, that's, that, that's I'm petty. Pray for that person. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I had to pray for him. It's kind of petty, giving me a thumbs down. Like that. I know you was like, all right, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, Smith, we have your IP. No, right, okay. right, right, right. <laughs> Find them. Yeah. yeah. Got it. <laughs> if you could change anything about the music industry today, what would it be? Oh, man. I would, I would want um, the people at the tippity tip top 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 that decides what's good and what's not to be moved out of the way. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, especially now... Um, the music industry, I've always felt like the music industry, the devil was running it. So, um, even in gospel, mm -hmm. because, you know, the, the in gospel, it's, it's a lot of business and it's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, a, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. 
And, um, you know, at the top, they kind of decide this is good and this is not. And I'm just like, no, that's not, you know, I feel like we as the people should be free to right. listen to what we want and we shouldn't have certain things jammed down our throats right. just because the head honchos at the top or the artists at the top that they want to push um, say that it's good. You know, that's not, I don't think that's fair. I never have, but that has been the industry from the beginning. So sometimes I sit back and I'm like, how did this person get a deal? Like they can't even sing. Exactly. Meanwhile, the person that you sitting next to in church is killing. It's like, it's like, this is crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but yeah, you know, also the industry that I've, I've always felt like they're looking for people they can mold. It's not so much of, you know, if you have an identity already and you kind of know who you are, it can't do too much with you. Right. But if you don't and you're just looking for fame, they're like, I got you. You know what I mean? Right. So, and those are, you know, some, some of them can sing, but I feel like music in general has changed. Like overall, the whole music scene has changed and how we write and what we write about the, the, the music, the beats, who's at the top rapping in itself is right. not rapping. So yeah. <sighs> that hurts my feelings. Uh, I'm hurts sorry. Feelings. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. You don't think that has changed? Oh, it's, it's definitely changed. Okay. All right. It's, it has like, definitely changed. That's why I've had a hard time. Like, I've had yeah. a hard time because of the rappers I used to grow up listening to. They're so different. So different. It's, then you add the fact that I gave that, you know, God called me. Okay. So yeah. you get saved. Now it's totally different because oh, I yeah. can't listen to some of the stuff I used to oh, listen yeah, to. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, half the stuff out now. Well, no. Over half. I'd say about 90% of music out now is a, is a no go. Yeah. It's like, well, I can't listen to no, no, no. Oh, you're kind of okay. Mm. Yeah. You know? So, but I mean, th that's for me, that's mm -hmm. for us because right. I, I know that we're Christian and like you, like we were talking about earlier, we have to filter out so many right. things. We can't let everything in. So there's only a limited amount of things that we can even listen to. Now, right. So, it's like there's the pie. You're getting a piece of a pie, and that's all right. And that piece is cut in half. Like, and in another half. It's, it's <laughs> like, crazy. It's like I don't it really. Is. Thank God. Look, I, this is lucky for me. Like, mm -hmm. I can listen to the same song over and over and over and yeah, over again. Yeah, and me not too. And get tired of it. Yes. So it's like, thank goodness for that. And I'm sure there's more, like, Christian rap and hip-hop out yeah. there or artists that are Christian out there that I just haven't discovered yet. Right, right. But thank goodness for the ones that I have. Cause I'm yeah, just like, it's tough. I'll be like, hmm, we just going to put that on repeat. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and just sit in silence right now. Cause yes, I, you know, yeah, because it'll go to the next one. I'm like, nope, not this one. Nope, we're gonna turn that off. So yeah, I get it. I don't believe how fast this time has gone. I know. I don't believe how fast that this quick, has gone. Man. This was quick. This brings me to the last segment okay. of the podcast. This is my favorite segment. Okay, I'm a little biased because I came up with it. So, ah, and by ah. me, I mean the Holy Spirit because this, this has nothing to do with me. Amen. This is our let them know segment. Oh, so gosh. the floor is yours. You can tell the audience anything you want to share, anything you want to say, anything you want to promote. The floor is yours to just say whatever you like that God may have had on your heart for the remainder of the podcast. So, oh, Indy, man. let them know. Ah, uh, sheesh. No pressure. pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We said that the None same whatsoever. Time. All right. Um, what, I, what do I want to let you guys know? All right. It's going to feel cliche but I, I really do feel led to to say this to whoever is listening um trust God and whatever you're doing whatever you put your hand to trust him uh, because he doesn't fail he doesn't he doesn't know how to it's not in his DNA to fail and what you're seeing right now is only right now um God has a plan for you um, he's already marked it all the way out. And I, I don't know. I don't know who's watching this. I don't know who's going to see this. But I just I really do feel led to just say trust God. Continue to walk with him, even though your your right now feels like how it feels. Remember, it's temporary and it's only a season. Um, he, he really does know. And, and he really will protect you. His plans are good for you seriously um let me be a testimony of that um give him your yes give him your yes with your whole heart do not give him half because he knows if it's half so give him your full yes and i promise you i promise you he will take care of you that was beautiful thank you so much man thank you so much for being on here today i'm glad we finally got to sit down and do this yes so. yes 
Yes. So COVID slowed me down a little bit when I get. So thank Listen. you for, for no, being thank so you, flexible. man, for having me. I was super excited. We gotta have you back. I know. I'm we gotta ready. Have you back. We gotta have ready. you back for album two, three, four, and five. I need, Ooh, to, Lord. I need to get you back. <laughs> We're just gonna put that in atmosphere too, right now. Hallelujah! <laughs> Andy, thank you so much for doing this today. I really yeah, appreciate man. it. See you move on all podcast platforms, please, please. Yes. yes. Do your spirit a favor. Fill up on that. Amen. Jesus Amen. name. Thank you, sister. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eric.